Five wildfires are still raging in the Panhandle as of Wednesday afternoon, scorching more than 920,000 acres. As of 2.45 p.m., the largest among them, Smokehouse Creek and Stintnet, had burned more than 850,000 acres, equivalent to about 1,300 square miles, making it the second largest wildfire in the state's history. The Smokehouse Creek fire is second only behind the 2006 Amarillo East Complex fire, which claimed 12 lives and burned more than 970,245 acres. And that is according to Texas AME Forest Service. The fire well surpassed the third biggest fire in 1988 fire named the Big Country Fire that scorched more than 366,000 acres across the affected regions are urging residents to relocate. Moore and Potter countries ordered mandatory evacuations for all residents early afternoon as the fire continued to spread and wind speeds remained high. Hemfield County Sheriff's Office Brent Clapp wrote in a Facebook post that, quote, it is strongly suggested to evacuate Canada. The evacuation point is the Argy Life Center in Wheeler. After that announcement, just minutes prior that the evacuation route in Higgins was no longer available as Highway 60 between Glazer and Higgins was shut down. Robert County Judge Newton Lockie issued a mandatory evacuation order for Roberts County, including the town of Miami. The city of Borgers Office of Emergency Management announced on Facebook that travel is discouraged on highway and rural roads as numerous wildfires are actively threatening several areas within Hutchinson County. Current road closures, Highway 136 to Amarillo, Ranch to Market Road 687, Highway 136 from Sinet to Amarillo, Highway 83 in Hempfield County and Highway 83 and Highways 23 in Lipscomb County. The National Weather Service Office in Labak and Amarillo issued fire weather warnings and high wind warnings throughout Tuesday night. Conditions were expected to improve going into Wednesday when wind speeds will drop to around 10 miles per hour, although low moisture will be will persist. In response to the heightened threat of wildfires across the state and the nation, Lubbock Fire Rescue is among departments that have deployed crews as part of the Texas Interstate Fire Mutual Aid System, or TIFMAS. The decision to mobilize the Lubbock Fire Rescue Team is due to the current red flag weather conditions that pose a significant risk across Texas and beyond. TIFMAS, a joint effort among emergency response agencies in the state of Texas, plays a crucial role in managing and dispatching resources to areas in need during times of elevated fire danger. Crews reported to Childress for initial attack pre-positioning and are expected to be on a two-week deployment in Lubbock. Fire crews battled several blazes, including a brush fire about 3.09 p.m. Tuesday near the 2100 block of Clovis Road, according to a statement from LFR. A 911 caller advised that a field area along the road was on fire. Crews were able to quickly extinguish the fire and zero spread to any structures or vehicle. By now, you guys have heard about the fires going on in Texas. Over half a million acres have burned so far. The, what a tragedy and, and uh, misfortune for the families that are ranching there. A lot of people don't, all, don't understand that that's one more hit to our nation's food supply chain. We are already in a very vulnerable position. And the lowest cattle numbers we've seen since 1950 uh, were down like a billion pounds in beef in the country which means they're gonna to have to import more, which doesn't help the local producers, which continues to weaken our food supply chain. We're not even into summer yet uh, and dealing with whatever droughts may show up now. So here's what you can do. Find your local farmers and ranchers and have their back. Make sure that they know they're growing their food or raising their food for somebody in America that cares. What we can do is change the way we source our food, leave the existing grocery supply chain where they get the retail dollar and go to our farmers and ranchers, shake their hand and make sure they get the retail dollar. 
that's how we can secure our food supply chain and also end up making it better for not just the producers, but our families and our environment. If you're not sure how to connect with those farmers and ranchers, we're gonna be able to help you at fromthefarm.io. We're onboarding producers now and we go live in a couple of days. So I'm not gonna go into how I find it very odd or strange that another fire has started somewhere in America. I'm not going to go over that, did that before in the live stream. Um, but I do want to state that this is not the first time that I've covered something like this before. Uh, prior before, I've covered a story where I gave a list of close to 100 um, different establishments of which it doesn't matter if it's almond milk, doesn't matter if it's dealing with turkey, um, chicken, if it's dealing with uh, beef, if it's dealing with wheat, if it's dealing uh, with pork. I gave a list of close to 100 um, different facilities which were hit either by some freak accident, a fire, a plane, or just getting shut down for whatever reason. So this is the image from basically roughly about close to two years ago, right? And you can see some of the areas that were hit across the United States. You can see some things dealing with uh, chicken. You see uh, turkeys directly up there, right? So you got things dealing with both the chicken meat and you also have to deal with the eggs. You also have uh, turkeys as well, right? You got certain areas like a, a Kellogg's plant. You got Tyson's uh, River, you got JBS uh, Beef Plant, a West Side food production. And uh, one of the areas in April, uh, you can look to the side, number 55, it says plane crash, right? Another one says fire destroyed, right? And a lot of these incidences, it'll say that it was a fire or some other random type of accident or maybe you might have a culling or uh, of certain animals or whatnot again this is all used in order for prices to go up that's going to be the main effect that's the main thing that i want a lot of people to understand and to take in um by way of this happening in texas which is one of the main areas that produces a lot of the beef that we eat around the united states think of the impact that that is going to have on everybody Think about the impact at your favorite dining restaurant. Think about the impact that that may have later on, uh, you know, when it deals with your favorite fast food, maybe a five guys, maybe a jack in a box, you know, all of those great places. Even thinking about the Mexican trucks that are directly out there, the food trucks that are directly out there, where a lot of these people depend on beef, where they use beef and a lot of their recipes. Right. And I want people to understand this is not something that you're going to feel the effects of right now. This is a down the road effect where you're going to be looking at the tail end of the summer towards the beginning of fall. Right. It's going to be in that area where you're going to really start to see how this is going to take effect, because, again, you're going to have those holidays roll up even when it deals with. Uh, let's say the 4th of July, you know, everybody likes to go out there and barbecue and grill. You're not really going to, in a sense, get a hint of it. You might hear some little whispers, but they're going to have other things out there in the media for you to focus in on and not really publicize or focus this. They'll start to really bring this up and maybe focus on this a bit more, maybe really kind of flash a headlight or two directly on it more towards when we get the holidays, the Thanksgivings. Right. When we end up getting the Christmases. Right. And I want people to know and understand, again, of course, this is not the time that people are going to tend to want to eat beef. But in between those holidays, in between those days, not just specifically those days, but in between those days, you have people like, hey, I want to sit up there and get a burger. Hey, I want to go to this restaurant. Hey, I want to try this restaurant. Hey, I want to do this and, and all of these other things. It's going to happen. It's the same thing that I watched a farmer tell a lot of people about the feed for the animals going up. So if they have to front the cost, 
right, for the feed. And this was, again, about two to three years ago when uh, this female rancher was stating to everybody how them paying extra for the feed is going to inevitably cost more. So it's going to be us that's going to foot the bill for that at the end of the day, right? Whatever they have to basically take on in front, we're going to have to take care of that, you know? Well, maybe let me reverse that. Whatever they have to do on the back end, we're the ones that's going to have to front that at the end of the day, right? So again, I just want people to understand that this is um, about control and this is a larger scheme and a larger plan. Again, I've been doing this for uh, quite a bit, putting out a variety of you know different videos out there for people to peruse and look directly into. So again, hopefully over the years, people have paid attention and people have listened and, and, and watched and, you know, tried to inform other people of the things that are going on directly out here.